this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Toshiba Portage Z20T. Ah, yes, that came out last year, and I know a lot of you asked me to review it. We couldn't get a hold of one, but Toshiba did get us one now. Even better, this is the Skylake Edition. So it's the Z20T-C. The older version was dash B, for those of you who follow this product. What is it? It's a 12.5-inch Windows tablet, 1080p display, with a serious keyboard dock here. This is, this is aimed at business users. Toshiba does two things. They either do kind of usually low-end consumer stuff or they do business products. This would be a business product. So it has a lot of ports. It's pretty much like a laptop on the go in, in terms of the ergonomics. We'll talk about that some and we're going to look at it now. So as we take a look from the back here, you can see it really does look convincingly like a laptop. By the way, the full-size pen is included there too right down to the keyboard deck. It's kind of a normal keyboard deck, just it's a little bit smaller. And by the way, notice the screen flickering there. Our camera sees it, our eye camp, but that's PWM, pulse width modulation on the screen for those of you who care about that. Now where the Portage really pulls ahead is on ports for a 12 and a half inch tablet. Look at all of those ports. You got micro ports on the tablet itself and you have two full size USB 3.0 ethernet and on the other side, we have VGA and HDMI ports. So pretty much everything a business user is going to need. So what's interesting about this is it looks like a, a standard laptop, doesn't it? 12 and a half inch, a little bit on the small side, but there's a lock slider release right over here. And in fact, if you want to make sure you don't accidentally activate that, I have no idea how you would, but there's another lock slider over here anyway. To, to disengage this, you just slide that lock. So they are firmly together. This is not like magnetic attachments that can be iffy or anything like that. And you've got a 12.5 inch tablet. It's about one and a half pounds. So it's not that heavy. Sexy looking, not so much. Uh, you know, it's not really that thick, but it's just kind of bland black. And a 16 by nine aspect ratio means that it's pretty wide and not very tall this way. So it's not ideal for portrait use, unlike say the surface products are a three by two aspect ratio. It feels sturdy enough. We got plastic and brushed metal here. Five megapixel camera on the back, so-so camera. Two megapixel camera on the front, pretty good. That is higher resolution than normal for a Skype camera, you know, video chat camera, and that one's pretty good. By itself, it's a little bit more powerful than some tablets. There's a lot of docking connector stuff going on over here. And on the side, we have micro SD card slot, like I said, micro HDMI. And we have micro USB there, so teeny teeny volume and power control. So it actually can do something all by itself with those ports. Granted, everything is in micro size of headphone jack, of course, too. And it comes with the big Wacom EMR pen. This is a really nice one. It's a little on the fat side, depends on what you like. It's got a clip built in. You don't have to rip one off a ballpoint pen like I'm fond of doing. And it's got the eraser style thing here though, and not all my art programs supported that, but there is a, what they call an emergency stylus on the bottom. Now it's blocked when it is in the docking station, though that's not the greatest idea. Probably the only place that they had a room to fit it though is right over here. And so you stick your fingernail in and if you don't have any, you're kind of SOL. <laughs> You have the little toothpick, which is better than nothing if you're going out on the road and you're about to give a presentation and uh, you need your little pointy stick. Now, <laughs> typical of a business product, this thing is massively engineered here. Look at these locator metal pins here and the hooks. I mean, that's uh, something you don't see on consumer products. Even Dell's XPS 12, the latest generation, just has that. It sits in a, a slot magnetically, really kind of hard to line up. You're not going to misalign this one. And two data connectors here because we have a lot of ports and connectors going on. So it, it's pretty darn sturdy. And again, it has lots of ports business users would appreciate, like the VGA that I know you regular consumers are going to mock, but yes, business users still need VGA for projectors, and it has Ethernet, so you go Toshiba. Also, there's a battery, 36 watt hour in the tablet, 36 watt hour in the base, a total of 72 watt hour, that's bigger battery capacity than you see in some bigger gaming laptops, so we'll talk about battery life later, but that foreshadows good battery life. You could take this apart. I really don't know why you would though, because other than the battery and the ports, there's nothing in this part right here of interest. The tablet, yes, people have taken it apart and there's some screws on the side underneath a little protective cover and you take those off and then you can pry the back off of this if you actually want to access the internals. Now, memory is soldered on the Intel wireless AC8260, that's the latest generation. Good to see that card with Bluetooth is inside. 
And you do have an M2 SSD, and that's a PCIe SSD, so that's pretty nice. It's a little quicker than average. Taken in total, these two pieces together weigh around 3.3 pounds, which is about the same as an Ultrabook of average weight. That's not super duper impressive, but well, it's not worse than an Ultrabook either. The keyboard, you know, it has good travel on the keys, and this is a backlit keyboard. Well, good travel relative to something this thin and small. I have no issues with the travel. However, the keys are kind of, well, teeny tiny. I wish maybe they could have brought it out a little closer to the edge of the frame. I find them a little too small to be comfortable. It's not as bad as a 10 inch netbook of old, but you know, it's small. Trackpad's pretty decent on this, and you have the uh, ThinkPad style eraser stick pointer here, the AccuPoint kind of pointer with buttons for this pointer. Now, just to give you an idea, this is the latest generation of the Surface Pro type cover, and the keys are actually bigger on this, though the keyboard unit itself, you can see, is actually not quite as wide as the entire Toshiba keyboard deck. This also has a... I, I like typing on the Surface Pro type cover better, I just have to admit it. Nice tactile feel, bigger keys, and sometimes the traditional keyboard isn't always the best. And for those of you who want to see it, next to Surface Pro 4, we have Surface Pro 4 on the left. Similar size, of course, Surface Pro 4, because it doesn't have the dock with all the ports and a secondary battery in the bottom, is smaller and weighs less overall. It really, really would be, in some ways, more appropriate to compare the Toshiba to the Surface Book, since that has a true dock bottom with a secondary battery in it, the Surface Book. But anyway, I know some of you might be cross-shopping these. The big things to keep in mind are matte display on the Toshiba versus glossy display on the Surface, higher color gamut on the Surface, similar brightness on these two, and trig pen on Surface, and the traditional Wacom EMR pen that's been around forever on the Toshiba. Surfaces tend to be cheaper too, and most of them have full core i3, i5, sorry, not i3, i5, i7, and there is a lowly core M option too, but more powerful for your money. I'm sure Toshiba won't enjoy this part of the video. Now, there are two models available. We have the C212, which is the higher-end 1699 model. I know that's expensive, isn't it? It has the core M5, and you can see the model number right there on the screen. It's the M56Y57, 1.1 gigahertz base clock rate. Core M's have very low base clock rates to save power, and they turbo boost up pretty high as needed. 2.8 gigahertz turbo boost. We have eight gigs of RAM in here and a 256 gig PCIe SSD. There is a less expensive model, and that one is 1399, but that has four gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD. That's just a little lower. And there's a, also a $1,000 just below model with a Core M3. The others have Core M5, and that also is 4 gig and 128 gig. Despite having a Core M CPU, since this is the M5, not the M3 we see more often on tablets, performance really wasn't that bad with our Skylake Edition here. This is the PC Mark 8 Home Accelerated Score 2675. I think bolstered by pretty good SSD speeds. Not a phenomenal, but in the 500s for the SSD scores and crystal disk mark. And that's not that far below the average Core i5 machine we see with an SSD that scores in around 2850 to around 3000 or so. Likewise on Geekbench 3, the 2767 for the single core and 4777 isn't that bad. It's sort of like a last generation Core i5. These days we're seeing the, the multi-core is pushing 6000 on Skylake Edition Core i5s, but overall that's really not lagging so far behind. The, the M5 does have more oomph, obviously, than the M3. It computed Pi in 27 seconds in W prime. That's not that impressive. Usually we see about 19 seconds or so for a Core i5, and for a quad-core machine, 16, but that's just not even a really fair comparison, just to give you an idea. Now, how about the display? One thing I really like is that this is a matte display. Touch screens are pretty rarely matte, so for those of you who hate glare, you'll be happy. 355 nits of brightness. This is a bright display. Color gamut, however, uh, <laughs> for this price range, that's pretty mm, lame. It's 69% of sRGB and only 52% of Adobe RGB, where we like to see close to 100% of sRGB and 75% of Adobe RGB in this price range. Sadly, business products often get lower gamut displays. That's just not fair. It's not like you're colorblind just because your company issues you a laptop or a tablet, right? 
Also, for those of you who do art using the pen, uh, we'll talk, we'll show you that in a bit, but the wider color gamut would have been nice. So you could see at least a full array of web colors in their beautifulness. Now, it's not a terrible looking display. I mean, it has some punch to it and all that sort of thing. It's just, well, we would have liked to have seen a little higher color gamut. Contrast is 530 to 1. That's actually brought down, despite the high brightness, by a pretty high black level of 0.67. Lower numbers are better. The less the number is, the closer it is to actual black. And by the way, our camera it does pick up some PWM, that's pulse width modulation flickering. I can't see it with the naked eye, but the camera could see it. Though this might not be an awesomely sexy tablet, I have to say I really like this for note-taking and for art. First off, the matte display not only reduces glare, but it also makes the pen feel a little bit more like it's writing on paper. And this, again, is traditional Wacom EMR technology that's been around for years, and a lot of artists who are used to that do like it. it it's precise. It supports pressure sensitivity. You can rest your hand on the screen. I'll do that now while I squiggle around. And it works pretty well. My pressure curves are not quite right here right now for the way that I draw, but you get the idea that this is pretty good. Of course, it is Wacom EMR, so you do have a little pen tip offset, but you have the little cursor locator to help you with that. So for those of you who like Surface Pro 4, but you just can't get used to Entrig, for example, well, there is always this as an option. Now, note-taking is an easier use case than art, certainly, and there are many solutions out there. The HP Spectre, even with Synaptics, uh, Surface products. Uh, this works really nicely, and it's fairly quiet, too. For those of you who hate the entry clicky thing, you don't hear nearly as much noise here. So I'm going to rest my hand on the screen and... There you go. Very fluid, very quick. And also, for those of you who are wondering how the Core M does with note-taking with art, it really is keeping up just fine. Now, I didn't have a very complex drawing in Clip Studio Paint with lots and lots of layers. If that's how you roll, you probably do want something with a Core i5 or better in it. But uh, for, for casual sketching, for cartoon-style, manga-style sketching, for note-taking, this Core M5 is perfectly fine. A, a nice consolation here for the Core M, though Core M doesn't always mean better battery, better battery life. Here it seems to, because the 36 watt hour battery in the tablet averaged us around six and a half to seven hours of use. That's without doing anything real draconian in terms of power management, just going with the normal balance setting and having the screen brightness at 50%, which is still pretty bright. That's about 150 nits of brightness. Combine that with the additional 36 watt hour battery in the base. And though a Toshiba claims something insane like 17 hours, uh, we saw more like 11 hours, which is pretty good. Uh, interestingly, when you have a two part mechanism like this, it's never as efficient as one single battery in the device. So that's why you don't get double the run times, even though you're doubling the battery capacity still. that you can't kill this in a business day. I mean, unless you're playing games all day, which you certainly probably wouldn't be doing on a 12.5 inch Core M tablet. Alas, though the 16 by 9 screen is great for watching movies, you're going to want to use headphones because the speakers are absolutely buzzy sounding and not super loud. Happily, just in case you eventually do need to charge it, it comes with a very petite charger here. Very small, very light, 45 watt, with lots of cord length here. I mean, look at all this. This is a true business laptop. They know that you might not be within three feet of an outlet, so you've got plenty of cord reach there. So that's the Toshiba Portage Z20T, the latest Skylake edition. And yes, it's expensive. Toshiba's business laptops are, uh, you know, so are Lenovo's and so on, but it's in a way antiquated, but it's still unique and powerful in the way that most tablets aren't. In terms of the dock being an actual laptop style bottom dock, we don't see that much anymore. Real normal keys, backlit, lots of ports on this thing. And most interestingly for you folks who are note takers or you like to draw too, this has the Wacom EMR pen standard. You don't have to pay extra, figure out which model to buy, anything like that. So it certainly has its uses. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.